All right, so we've done the flywheel video. We did a video, which hopefully you've already seen, about putting the new flywheel into the case, installing the case in the motorcycle. You know, there have been a couple people that have said that the videos kind of have too many shenanigans. I'm gonna need a black belt for my next motor build. I'm gonna keep <laughs> it on my bench. Hey, my bench. So I'm gonna step, just go right into it. This one's gonna be pretty straight up. And I'm gonna start with going over the SNS oil pump and cam plate system. So the SNS oil pump is different in the fact that it has two completely separate scavenge departments. It has one for the crankcase side of the motor that goes into a compartment that has its own scavenge gear. Then there's a plate that separates the two. Then it has a scavenge compartment solely for the cam chest area for all that oil runoff that has its own gear that then pushes that in back to the oil pan. One of the things I really like about the SNS is each one of the compartments has a, a filter screen. So just in case there is anything that catastrophic that is to happen, which is very unlikely, but you know, better safe than sorry. There's a pickup screen for it to go through. Then it goes through magnets that will help hold the debris inside the screen or keep it from going in uh, to begin with. And they also pick up real fine particles, you know, from uh, ring break in and what have you. And this is a water cooled engine. So it has a smaller feed compartment than the oil cooled. I have a stock oil pump here for comparison. You can see the scavenge. Here's the whole scavenging department of the stock gear for the stock pump versus two that are a little more than half the size. So not only do they have more, more area by the sheer size of the gears themselves, look how much more there is. There's almost 50% more scavenging capability in the SNS system just by the size of the gears alone. Onto the cam plate. The pump and the plate are made of very strong billet aluminum offers 50% more strength than the OEM structure. Now the OEM plate and pump are cast and the reason that they are made, they're cast and they're not made of billet is because most of it boils down to cost. You know, they build hundreds of thousands of these. It's not the same thing as an SNS or a fueling cam plate where they're building them specifically to put them into a performance application. They're not building this cam plate and oil pump to be put into every motorcycle on the road. These have adequate oil flow and oil pressure for 90% of the motorcycles out there. But these are very robust. They are machined out of billet, like I said. They're, all the portholes are matched. There's a lot of care and time that's taken into these and it just wouldn't be cost effective or necessary to put this into a stock motor. You know, almost none of these engines, if you look at the total, are going to be gone through and put through what we're doing. This is 1% of the population of Harley owners, really, that we're putting these in. Maybe two. Hi, this is Roy. I am the voice of Harley Davidson. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just a voiceover guy that got conned by these jack-offs to hey. do some work for free. I have to say, that is really blue. I like blue. Well, they are blue. Anyway, sorry for that interruption. Voiceover guy starts getting a little important every once in a while. He doesn't I even subscribe. know what to say. I know you did. I watch all of our videos. I know. He's the one that agreed to do it for free. The SNS plate is billet with bronze carrier bushings so that if there is pressure or wear, it wears through the bushing before the plate. These bushings are replaceable. Everything on the SNS pumps is rebuildable. So if there is any kind of a failure, you can buy just that one component and replace it, which is great. That's very hard to do. You know, if you get an OEM, if something goes wrong with your oil pump, you gotta buy the whole thing. If something goes wrong with the cam plate, you gotta buy the whole setup. With these, you can buy parts if it's salvageable and repair those. Now they recommend not to have run out over five thousandths when you install the high performance plates because obviously the tolerances are tighter and the material is a lot harder. So if you recall in the last video, we had this, we sent this flywheel to Revolution uh, Performance 
they retrude it so we can remove the counterbalancer and they pin the flywheel and if you look it's not even a thousand an inch of run out straight as an arrow one more thing I always replace the cam bearing this is this the OEM you can see the needles inside a cage this is a performance upgrade. There's a couple of companies that make these, Ina, Koyo, but if you'll notice, all roll pins. Much more robust. Now Grit has chosen to go with a real strong, broad torque curve. He doesn't, he does a lot of highway riding, really likes to just kind of get there and twist the throttle and feel it, knock his head back but he doesn't want it to have so much power that he feels it's unrideable. So we chose one of our staple go-to cams, the Andrews M520. It is a great cam for anything from a 117 cubic inch up to 128, even, even larger. Um, it's got a really nice flat cor torque curve. It might not make the most power out there, but he doesn't want the most power. He wants good, strong, reliable dependability. And trust me, it's gonna make some numbers. We're gonna go ahead and remove the dial, put the cam and the plate together, and I'll be right back. So one of the things that we always put on all of our performance builds, even with just a, a cam install, we like to use the Billet SNS aluminum lifter cuffs. The uh, stock ones are fiber plastic. They work pretty good. Again, manufacturers have to be cost conscious when they're putting these in. We like to add these to the to the install because it adds just another layer of rigidity and protection as the lifter is going up and down for especially for some of the bigger lift bigger pressure motors like the 520s um, we pretty much put them on all of them it's just the part that we just add to all of our builds because you can't go wrong by getting these layers of rigidity inside the motor so I'll just get these on there and get them spaced out. You need to have two thousandths feeler, uh, two thousandths clearance on, on the uh, sides of the lifter. I use feeler gauges and make sure I have two thousandths on both sides as I tighten it down and then tighten it to stock, put the caps on, and I'll be right back. So here's my trusty two thousandths feeler gauge. Nice, nice fit all the way around. I'll say we put the tops on these and we're gonna move on to the top end next. I stab my finger and I'm over here. I go like this and it fades to black. Damn it, I always forget something. On this gear, on the scavenge side, this is the one that goes furthest inboard on the back of the pump cover. You'll notice this flap does not cover the entire inside of the gear. This is directional and this goes towards the inside of the motor. If you put it on the other way or if you put this one on the inside the pump will protrude and you'll wonder why when you're putting the cam plate on every time you start to tighten it down it binds up the motor it's a super big deal